well another day another challenge and this is an interesting one this is a 1948 florin two shilling piece and it needs to be made into a size M ring nothing at all unusual about that you might say there's two things which are unusual about this particular ring make first is I'm filming it in 4k <laughs> ultra HD I don't know how well that will come out if indeed it will at all and the second is this isn't one that I can afford to get wrong the story behind this and it comes from a, a little email exchange this is um my hay fever is bad today. I hope I don't sneeze halfway through this. Um, the, the, the chap I'm making this for saved this from his pocket money. And it's his daughter's birthday coming up. He thought it would be nice to make it into a ring for her. They're nice. So now when I usually do a commission stuff like this if I was going to make a 1948 ring if someone just asked me to get get a 1948 and make it into a ring I'd usually get a couple I'd get a spare just in case cuz you know you never know but with this one this is this is unique cuz this is the coin that he saved from his pocket money so this, you know, it's regardless of, of the year or the type of coin, this is the actual coin that he saved from his pocket money. So I'm going to have to be extra, extra careful and kneel it at every possible opportunity. Now, I've had this a week and I haven't done it. And the reason for that is my arthritis flared up. And when it does, it's one of those things, I can't do anything. Um, it really, sadly, it's, um, it's completely debilitating. Can't cook, find it difficult making a cup of coffee, all those sort of things, just impossible. Absolutely, just bonkersly impossible. And what I didn't want to do was A, make the arthritis worse, and B, run the risk of not being able to handle this properly so I've waited and this now is going to be today the day where I make it into a ring and the first thing I'm going to do is punch a, a hole in the middle a three eighth of an inch because remember this is pre decimal and it's also pre you know milio meters and stuff so what I'm going to do is punch that hole out in the middle just to remove the rows if I can do it right and I think I think we'll be okay on here I think I don't have a this is this is the more modern one I think this is a 66 67 uh, 67 yeah there it is it says so on there um, the definition around the rows is nicer to punch out but I think this will be fine and if I can keep that rose nicely, I might pop a hole in there so it can go on a charm bracelet or something. don't know. So I'm not going to do lots and lots of filming of this today because I really want to concentrate on making the ring as well as I can while my fingers will allow. First of all, anneal it and bash a hole in it with uh, this 3 8 punch. These videos wouldn't be the same without the scary bit. This is where we start the entire process. Now annealing, I know I've covered this in lots of other videos, um, but uh, essentially Annealing takes a hard metal and makes it softer. 
and as you work it and manipulate it, it goes through a process of what's known as work hardening. Now even this last week would have been impossible. I wouldn't have been able to hold these. But today, not too bad. That's why I've got all these waiting to be ringdidded. So, safety first. Turn off the gas here and on the bottle. Dry that off. And then, look at that. Looks a bit different now, doesn't it? Oh, you ruined the coin. Next, we ponk it into this particular wonderfully engineered bit of apparatus that cone will then pull the coin dead center and we then do this so this is a six ton press so we're applying six tons of pressure to push that punch it out it's a bit look at that so I'm gonna put that in a little envelope I might come back to it later and I've got a sticker to go on there that says the bit from the middle so we don't want to confuse it with any other bits from any other middles. Now those who've watched these ring making videos before will know that this is the first, well obviously apart from punching a hole in it, uh, the first oh, get off, part of turning something flat into something tubular. And that's all I'm going to do on that. A tiny, tiny amount of fold. And that's all for that very, very first part. Then we anneal it again and again and again. And gradually we keep, let's move that out of the way. We keep pushing it through these ever decreasing kirins or dies with these fiber and the reason for that is fiber doesn't destroy the lettering inside whereas a metal folding cone metal against metal would completely obliterate all of the inside because this will be the inside of the ring that um, I think that size punch for the center is about perfect if we look at how it's followed the crescent of the crown on there obviously this will be stretched out how good is that right so I'm now going to start I've obviously polished cleaned and deburred and polished the inside of here I'm going to take my time over this. Um, I did tell the chap a couple of hours. I think I'm probably going to spend a little bit more on there. I'm not going to charge him anymore. But I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this because I just want to be absolutely sure at every stage that nothing is going to go wrong. As I said earlier, you know, uh, someone asked me to go and get a 1948 
florin I'd buy a couple just in case but this ring is absolutely unique this is the ring that he saved from his pocket money I think that's really sweet I love stuff like that I really kind of that that makes doing this even more fun uh, so I'm not going to do a huge amount more video now because I really want to concentrate on getting this right it's what uh, we are about 11 o'clock in the morning um, so I shall do that and come back when it's slightly more a ring shaped ring I'm gonna... welcome back we have got to the stage of the intermediate stage of it being a disc with a hole in it and it being a ring now this is the this is the part where I have now been on this particular machine um, stretching the non reed side out. This is the reed side. This is the non reed side. So that goes on there, and then as you push up these splines expand, the six splines, and stretches this out. Obviously you need two hands to do that. Uh, I'm at the final stage now of almost getting this to an O. Now the way that works is... <sighs> no, it's an M we want. Yeah, we want an M, so I need to take this out to an O. Now the reason for that is the finishing off means squishing the reed side in and to do that nicely to get a, a reasonably nice straight side we need to oversize it and then hone it down a little so that's where we're aiming for is an M so I'm going to oversize it probably to about an O Riveting stuff, eh? Let's see how we do. Go for that dramatic shot now, shall we? Look at that. So, this is where we want it to be, where we want it to finish. No, it's not. That's where we want it to finish. So I wasn't looking at what I was doing there, do you know? I was looking outside uh, to see what um, what was going on on the towpath. Uh, <laughs> caught out. Right, so this is where we want to be. So this now, the reed side needs shrinking in. And as we do that, the non-reed side will shrink in as well. But we size the ring to the reed side because that's the thick bit. We take that off. See that is twice the thickness of that, yeah? So in order to get a straight side, if that was a size M and that was a size M, it would be a cone. So when these are made, and I will shave the inside of that reed out a little bit um, for comfort, but to squish this in now to make this an M, means this will be larger than an M. And through all of those stages on the um, Thurston ring stretcher there, all of those stages I've been deburring and polishing with these lovely little um, emery pads. They're sort of foam pads with emery paper. Only very fine because, as I always say, the slightest imperfection where we've knocked that hole. Now remember, you know, that hole, where have I put the, um, boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's here, hang on. This is the bit from the middle. All right, now if you, if you imagine that little hell is now a massive hell and consequently, um, the metal gets thinner as you stretch it. So the slightest imperfection, and that would have become Scrapio. Here's a, um, here's a threepenny bit that I used to demonstrate that um, how easy it is to go. 
Right. Anyway. <clears throat> How are we doing? Half past twelve. It's not too bad. It's uh, a couple. It's about two, two and a quarter, two and a half hours. That's all right. I'm okay with that. I've enjoyed doing it this far. Next, I'm going to have a coffee, and then I'm going to start squishing the outside in. There's two ways to do that. One is we wrap it in tape and PTFE and we squish it through something like this this is called a Swedish wrap we squish it down through there that's kind of like a cone-ish and it pulls these sides in we don't need to pull it in very much though I'm wondering whether or not I could just shape it in here mmm coffee I have decided if I'm gonna spend some time on this I might as well spend some quality time and shove it through a cone for a Swedish wrap and that entails wrapping it first in PTFE tape this is to cushion it against the metal because what we don't want to do metal on metal we'll just leave a nice shiny sort of bit of tube so this is to protect all of the detail on the outside so first wrap it in PTFE tape and then add some electrical tape and to ensure that it pushes down level and the uh, Delrin plastic push rod doesn't slip off we need to remove this again if you've watched any of these videos before you will know what happens here so let's, line that up. let's give it a quick that's all and that pushes the reed against the metal of here and if you can see around the edge there then removes how good is that so this now probably in here yep so I'm going to put some coconut oil all of my work is vegan boys and girls there we are and next get ready to squish it back on the six ton press I don't think I'm gonna squish this massively through we only need to bring that reed side down a little bit now I have put this in here this is just in case it does pop too much through the bottom I don't think I'm gonna pop it through the bottom I think that's about as far as I'm going to take it there oh exciting eh Use two hands, Martin. Use two hands. I will. I promise. One day, I'll set a proper camera system and tripod up when I pretend to be professional and know what I'm doing and all that sort of stuff. Oh, the big reveal. I should be able to do this one-handed. Do you know, I'm not going to do it one-handed. I'm going to do it two-handed because my fingers... My fingers, don't you know? My fingers. Ooh. Now, this is where we check the size on the reeded edge and see how close we are. Come on, focus, darling. Oh, we are so not far off there, look. I'm getting good at this, aren't I? So that now, that outside reed edge is where we want it. What we do now is stretch the non-reed edge out so that it's less of a cone and more of a ring shape. But, you know, I don't need to stretch 
reed edge anymore because let's pop that back to make this more comfortable to wear if you see on the outside where the reed sticks out well that's the same on the inside as well so there's this this ridge just around the rim there and just show you with this so all the way around here there's a ridge that sticks inward I am going to get the Dremel of a multi tools are available and I'm then going to shave off most of that ridge there that you see just makes it slightly more comfortable to wear I'm not going to take it all off I'm just going to sort of take the the main um, ridge away and it started raining outside good show you see there we are just taken the the pointy part of that inside reed oft might take a little bit more off I don't know actually probably not as it squished in it did push a little bit extra reed there so I've just sanded that a little bit more just to flatten that off but that should be reasonably comfortable to wear now so having shaved that off what's it done to the size well look at that what do you make out of that boys and girls we're on to an M next I need to just open out the non reeded side a little bit to make it more ring like and less cone like but first what do we do before stretching it of course set light to it right, it's not setting light to it this it's a good job I cut all the uh, annealing out otherwise you'd have had about 20 sessions of uh, blowtorch which wouldn't have made for a very exciting video boys and girls okay safety first off there off there double check here we are so this is the final stage of the forming of the ring which of course I'll need to do with two hands going for the dramatic shot again look it's a perfect M I just did take my time on that, but oh, very happy with the way that has turned out. Let's put a nice little chamfer on the reed. Wow, look at that. And, and I think that initial hole punch was perfect sized. Look at the way that crown has, has stretched out. What I need to do now, obviously, is get it polished up and see how it looks. Well, well, well. That. Wow. I am exceptionally pleased with the way that's turned out. The reed. Yep. There's nowhere near the amount of deformation on that 
that I sometimes get, just to give you an example. Trying to squish metal in on itself can sometimes lead to all sorts of nasty outcomes. But this, oh goodness me. I'm happy with that. Unfortunately, I couldn't really keep a whole lot of the internal detail. Um, but that I'm happy with that. And I think just the right amount of patina on there. To bring out the detail. And like I said, the story is just beautiful. Yeah. He was given this by his dad. This was his pocket money. So it's given to him by his dad. And he now wants this made into a ring to give to his daughter. So his daughter's now got a coin that her granddad gave to her dad. Yeah, that for me, I mean, a story behind something like this is just, it's priceless. It just makes it. Good show. Right, where are we? To, to, 10 to 2. <laughs> yes. 10 to 2. I'm going to have some lunch. <laughs> Wow, yeah, really, really have enjoyed this. And that, paying that little attention to, you know, just because I couldn't, there was no way I could allow this one to go wrong. I just couldn't do. So, God, we're pushing four hours. But it was an enjoyable four hours. And my fingers, this is the thing you see, that I always have to now be very careful supposedly with arthritis with quite crippling arthritis the more you can use the joints the better which is why i try and encourage people to engage in an activity similar to this to try and keep some of the movement there otherwise i think you just seize up um, and the the long-term plan is to be able to offer this type of uh, activity to patients through the boathouse social I'll put a link in the um, in the description to uh, the joining page for Boathouse Social. I don't think I need to plug it anymore. <laughs> I've plugged it quite a lot, um, but I'd be able to offer this to people and to patients, and 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 I think you know it is a it's a it's a beautiful beautiful thing to do with an old coin. All right, right, that's it for now. I am going to um, put that something like that. That will be the thumbnail, I expect, um, for the uh, for the video when the video goes onto YouTube. -y. But there we have a size M, very special, very unique, and beautiful story behind it. Size M coin ring. If you like this nonsense, please do think about subscribing to the channel. It'd be lovely to have you. And if you um, if you click the little thumbs up thing, it tells YouTube that this video might be worth watching. So the more people click the thumbs up, the more YouTube recommends this video to other people. Brilliant. Whatever you're doing, do it safely, boys and girls, and uh, cheers.